two, one. God, everybody, what's up out there? This is Mike Bird, and you're listening to Hammered. Hey, thanks for being here with us tonight. We got Mr. Brian Howie in studio. For those of you that don't know Brian, so Brian is expert on dating. I think it is called. He is America's leading dating influencer. All right, a master provocateur. This guy, you want to know about dating, you talk to Brian Howie. Okay, so a special thing with Brian, tonight he is making his return visit to Hammered. He was on last April. Actually, maybe it was before then. It was He was planning to come to Raleigh. He was going to do one of his great love debate shows, and yours truly was going to be on that mother. And then the freaking virus came and just sucked the life out of everything. And it's still doing that now. Well, it's not as bad now, but you know what I mean. Anyway, we got Brian on the show tonight. He's going to let us know what's going on uh, with the great love debate. He's going to be talking about his new excursion called Pod Populi, which is a a series of uh, chain podcasting studios throughout the country. I know he's got one in Arizona, Scottsdale, Arizona. He's got one in Hudson, Ohio. He's got locations coming to Florida, Tennessee. Man, I hope he brings one to Raleigh because podcasting is taking off. And if you want to be a podcaster, now's the time because people are listening. People are listening to your voice. They, you would be surprised. Put some good content out there, and people will download your shows. And hey, I'm trying my best right now, so I hope all you out there share this on your iTunes. I'm on Spotify. We're on YouTube right now. I hope you're watching our video. Hey, without further ado, let's don't keep this man waiting. Here is Brian Howie. Great love debate. Pod populi. There we go. We'll be back. Well, what's going on, Brian? How are you doing tonight, man? Good to see you again. Good talking to you. Good to see you. Hope you're good. Hope you're safe. Hey, man. You know, since the last time we talked, when was that? Probably uh, God, March or April, something like that. Yeah, about uh, a year ago. Yeah, a lot's changed. Yeah, uh, a lot, a lot's changed, but a lot's you know <laughs> stayed the same too. I guess like you were planning on coming to Raleigh, you were doing your great love debate show. Um, I was yeah. all excited for that, and man, it, it keeps the pandemic got, it came got, and got, shut got, us down. Pushed back, pushed back, delayed. You know, like a lot of places, but hopefully it's just a pause, and uh, and eventually we'll we'll circle back to everywhere we planned on going. So, like pre-pandemic, man, you were on a you were on a roll, traveling all over the country. Now that the pandemics came and you've had to like alter some stuff, what you got going on now? Well, I traveled more than just about anybody has over the last seven months. I wasn't doing too many live shows, but I really have been traveling a lot. I've been to twenty-seven states in the last seven months, which which gave me a pretty good perspective on what's open, what's closed, how many people, how, how people are handling things, you know, what it's like to be in Nashville when it's completely empty, <laughs> you know, a lot of different perspectives uh, on doing that, on doing that. So, so, you know, what are you doing when you go to these cities? Cause I look well, on Facebook, man, and you're like checked in the airports here and you're yeah, all over the country, literally uh, a lot of real estate um, stuff. We are, uh, we're opening up sort of a chain of podcast studios um, around the country. So I was doing a lot of um, looking at retail space. And fortunately for me, unfortunately for a lot of people, there's a lot of uh, available now um, inexpensive retail space, which is sucks. Mm-hmm. But um, there's some opportunities out there. And so I was, I was sort of pursuing them. Let's talk about that, man. I'm, yeah. I'm kind of curious. I, I see your clips, your, uh, your pod papuli. Is that how you say it? Pod populi. I knew I was going to just populi, that which, is, which is Latin. Populi is Latin for the people. So what we wanted to do is bring the opportunity for, you know, regular people, for lack of a better term, to have the opportunity to pat, to podcast. And, and sort of the barrier to entry that, I, that I've noticed is people either didn't know, have anywhere to do it or didn't know how to do it. And, and I wanted to take that away. I wanted to be able to put sort of storefront brick and mortar studios right on main street and some you know popular um parts of towns and um let people learn about podcasting launch a podcast watch a podcast and uh 
So we're opening about 20 of these um, this year. We've got a few open so far and uh, it's been going great. Like I'm very passionate about podcasting. I think every mom, dad, kid, business owner, anybody with a passion project should, uh, should have a podcast. And, uh, and uh, so I'm, I'm into it. I've gotten into it. So I've used this opportunity, um, sort of this downtime from what I normally do to sort of get into this another endeavor. Yeah. So like the big thing, the, the hardest part about getting into podcasting, like I'm a beginner podcaster. I've been going at this. Um, I think I'm like 28 episodes in now. Uh, the hardest part is figuring out the technical side, uh, yeah. getting all your equipment, learning all the software. Um, it drives you mad. I'm telling you, like before we went on air, I was having an issue with zoom and the whole way I wanted to do our podcast was through this application called, um, OBS studio. And I use that for all my in studio stuff and it works great. I love it. But through zoom, it's not compatible, I guess. It's complicated. So, uh, you know, when I first started my first podcast, uh, I don't know, six years ago, um, I had somebody do that for me. I had uh, Adam Carolla and his team come to me and say, just come into the studio and start talking and don't worry about anything else. Don't worry about the editing, the sound, just do, do the best show you can. And that was such a big advantage for me that I wanted to people to have that same opportunity. Like just come in, start talking and we will handle all the rest sort of A to Z. And uh, it makes a difference because if you're not worrying about, how you sound or, Oh my God, I got to edit that. Or do I have a stable connection or is this a good microphone? You know, it frees you up to create good content and that's what it's all about. So I saw some of them and um, you're like, you got kids, you got parents up there talking to their kids. Yeah. Um, Every kid wants to be a YouTube star and every parent's like, I don't want my kid to be a YouTube star. So sort (laughs) of a happy compromise is podcasting because they get to sort of gain confidence and have a voice and express themselves without Mm -hmm. the whole world sort of watching them. So the, these people come in, they do a podcast, they pay like a, a monthly fee, kind of yeah, like they pay, gym. Some, some pay a monthly, some pay a per session. And, uh, you know, I hate to use the, it's like a gym membership or a tanning salon or something like that, where you pay for the session. And depending on the level of service you want out of us, um, we handle all the sort of bells and whistles and, and the hard part of it. So people can just think, what do I want to talk about and, and do it. And, it, and it's, it's really liberating because I've done it both ways. I've done it where I just go into a studio and everything's handled for me. And I've done it where I have to like do all the equipment myself and, you know, both are doable. And uh, I've recorded podcasts in, in, you know, 12 countries and, you know, a hundred cities and, you know, sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's hard, but I want to make it so it's always easy for, for sort of regular people, members of the community to do it. It's so actually a genius operation. I mean, yeah. everybody wants to podcast. Everybody wants yes. their podcast these days. Everybody wants right. to be and heard. Every, and everyone has heard. And wanted, so we have these like right on street front. So it's like the Today Show where there's a big glass window and people walk by and see, wait, hey, that's the guy from the hardware store hosting a podcast. <laughs> uh, and uh, people like it and people get competitive about it. They're like, why does she have a podcast? I should have a podcast. And so uh, it's been going well. So that's what I've been doing. I've been looking at different cities and, and places where we're going to do this. And uh, so I traveled most of the time. It was a good time to travel. If you were, a lot of times the planes were completely empty and the hotels were always completely empty. And, uh, you know, it was kind of a good time to see the country. I know a lot of people who did that, who just got in their car and, and drove around. I didn't think it was any more dangerous than staying in my own neighborhood or going to my own CVS, you know. So mm-hmm. I took advantage of it. That uh, you call home California, right? So I do, and California is about the last place you want to be right now. Uh, yeah. Los Angeles is it is in is in awful shape. Um, everything is closed. The riots were going on all summer. Two blocks from my house, uh, there's a real homeless problem going on there. So sort of the the California beach dream that I had been living for a couple of years, I, I had to just get out of there. And uh, uh, now, as far as I, like. L.A. County. Do you live in L.A. County? Yes, I do. Is it com- like is everything shut down? Like when you yeah. I'm in North Carolina. So when I hear all this stuff about Governor Newsom and what he's doing it's, over there. So you can go into a restaurant, right? OK. OK. So not only can you not go into a restaurant in California, all of these restaurants who spent tens of thousands of dollars setting up the outdoor seating, which should be fine, especially in California, 
that's closed. Like it, it's such a ridiculous, um, th th there's so many businesses ruined. There's so many businesses that, that, that didn't bounce back from the, from the riots and the protests this summer um, that, that never had a shot. So uh, it's a ghost town in Los Angeles and uh, it's just sort of a sad place to be right now. Um, so I have only been home, quote unquote, like 10 days in the last five months. Wow. I mean, I can tell. I see your posts, your check-ins at all these airports. I'm like, yeah, oh, the, 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 the place, yeah. though, I'll tell you what, the place that was the most locked down the whole time of the last, you know, nine months, and I've been to a lot of places, the place that at its peak was, was the most seriously locked down was Miami. Really? Uh, so Florida wasn't particularly locked down, but Miami itself was. Miami was no joke. Like mm. everything was closed. You couldn't go on the beach. You couldn't go. You couldn't walk outside without a mask. There were police everywhere. Like Miami really, really locked it down for for about a six week period. The rest of Florida pretty much seemed open the entire time. Mm -hmm. um, but still, even places that were open a lot, like like a place like Dallas. It was open, but people weren't necessarily going out. So that really hurt a lot of businesses there. A lot, half the bars and restaurants in Dallas are not coming back. You know, oh, so even though funny. they were open, they, you know, just not enough people were, were going there. Yeah. So is that going to be the future home of Brian Howie, Texas? You going to uh, Californians? I don't speak? know. I like Nashville. I've been spending a lot of time in uh, in Scottsdale, Arizona, which I really like. I kind of like the idea of spending a little bit of time in a lot of places. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. So um, Wilmington. I like I like Wilmington, North Carolina a lot. Come on, man. Get, yeah, I like it. In studio one day. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I got here we go. Pod popula. Pop Populi. Populi, Pod Populi. Pod Populi. That is currently in Hudson, Ohio, and in Scottsdale, Arizona. Yeah, um, and uh, we're opening Boca Raton, Florida. We're opening in Nashville. We're opening a bunch of places. So. Oh wow! So you got like four studios coming. Well, two online now, or do you two have four online now? Online? Two about to open, and then we'll have about twenty by the end of the year. Charlotte, oh, I think. Is, Charlotte, I think, is the closest to you. Oh, Charlotte. Yeah. Okay, uh, you should have brought that to Raleigh, man. Charlotte's a dud. Charlotte Charlotte's got a uh, Charlotte's got a lot of rich soccer moms who want podcasts. Okay, I got you. Chase the money. Yeah. <laughs> I don't blame you there. <laughs> a lot, of, a lot of, as I call them, Lululemon moms who want to drop their kids off at, at school and then go record their podcast. There's a lot of those. Well, what is what is Great Love Media? Is that like your company that encompasses yeah, all these that's, things you do? That, that's sort of the parent company of. Um, of the great love debate and a few other things under that umbrella. So yeah, it's sort of the parent company that we had to sort of spin off when, when the great love debate got to be sort of a bigger thing than we could handle. And it handles that and some of our podcasts and some of our production company. Um, so, yeah, man. Um, I got to tell you, I love that political junkies podcast. I know now that's a podcast that I just host. That is not, I don't, produce it. I don't know. I'm just one of the hosts of it. And they recruited me to, and we do that in Las Vegas. So I have to go to Las Vegas uh, twice a month and do it in studio there. And that is wild. Like the idea was that we would have a reasonable conversation on some reasonable. There's no reasonable conversation when it comes to politics. these uh, days. People are now. so passionate and, and so uh, passionate and, and they're so polarized. And sometimes that's fun. And sometimes it's just like, what did we just talk about for an hour and a half? Uh, you're, you're like the middleman. Yeah, I'm supposed to be the middleman. And sometimes I feel like I have to go to one extreme because the yeah. seesaw got tipped too far one way or another. But, uh, yeah, I've had a lot of fun doing that. And, um, and, uh, you know, we're continuing to do that. It's been interesting to be in Vegas a lot over the last six months, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so Vegas has been open and it has been fairly inexpensive hotels to stay at. So a lot of people are going to Vegas, but there's no shows, there's no nightclubs, there's no bars. So it's pretty much just the casino floor that is that is open. So people mm -hmm. are just sort of hanging on the casino floor, drinking with masks on. It's it's a strange, it's a strange scene in Vegas right now. <laughs> and so when you go there to to record um political junkies, do you yeah. record so you only go you go twice a month? Are you recording like two episodes or are you Yeah, we're doing two episodes twice a month. Um, okay. 
So you're trying to, you know, be as topical as possible. You don't want to record one two weeks before it drops and the whole world changes. Yeah, so that's you have, true. You have that's... to really be careful to, uh, you know, most podcasts, a good podcast should be sort of evergreen where the content is still relevant, you know, six mm -hmm. months later. You know, political jun junkies, you know, news breaks so fast and, and uh, you kind of got to address it. But sometimes you're aware like, oh, wait, this one isn't dropping till the 19th. So um, it's hard. It's a hard balance. You got to you got to really balance the the breaking news versus sort of the big picture stuff. Well, for, for beginning podcasters out there, yeah. um, what do you recommend as far as a schedule as releasing your podcast? Um, right now, I'm trying to do two a week and I'm thinking uh, Mondays and Wednesdays. Uh, if you're going to do two a week, you should do Mondays and Wednesdays. Um, you should do at least one a week. A lot of people do every two weeks. You're not going to get the subscribers that way because people are not going to get in the habit of, of listening to you. Now, the thing that is about the, the, the pandemic is it has really screwed up people's listening schedules. So most podcast numbers are down over the last eight months. And the reason for that is that most people listen to their podcasts either on their commute or when they're like on a regular gym schedule or something like that, that they have a routine and the podcast is part of that routine. People's routines are so screwed up now. And so they're like, well, I can just sit here and watch, you know, two seasons of The Sopranos instead of listening to a podcast. So it's really gotten people out of it. But if you're going to drop a podcast, you should drop it on a weekday, like you said, because most people do listen to pod A lot of people used to think, oh, I drop it on the weekend because people will listen on their free time. No, people listen while they're doing other things or on their way to do other things. That's a weekday thing. So yeah. uh, I, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are the best days to drop a podcast. And I think you should do it at least once a week. Awesome. Yeah, I, I did a lot of research and reading on this. And a lot of podcasts I listen to, actually, that's a good way. I joined a lot of these podcast groups on Facebook and uh -huh. you listen to someone there, just people just like me, you know, that just started and you get some good ideas from how to structure your show by listening to some of those and, but anyway, those groups help. But yeah, that's how I learned um, about. And there's a lot. There's a lot of ways to monetize a podcast now that didn't exist a couple of years ago. You know, yeah. it's not always about having the most um, the the most listeners. It's sort of about having uh, just an engaged group who 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 come back week after week. So you can make some money with a smaller group of people if you know how to engage them. Yeah. Now you also have another show, but I cannot remember the name of it. I saw like a clip. What was it? Um, the Great Food Debate or something like the that. Great Food Feud. Great Food Feud. Yes. Yeah, I'm in the I'm in the uh, passionate conversation business. Yes. Uh, yeah. So on the food feud, like I just think that it's any type of food, whether it's uh, tacos or cheese or seafood or barbecue, it's something that everybody has an opinion on. Everybody thinks they know the best way to eat it. Everybody thinks they know the best place to get it. And so it's just grabbing three or four people, um, sometimes in a bunch of cities where I travel around to and having sort of a passionate discussion on, uh, you know, what's the best uh, taco and stuff like that. Who's that's got really the best fun. wings, the hottest wings. Who's got the best wings and people, uh, you know, what's the best thing to put on a burger? Is a hot dog a sandwich? We've done all kinds of of crazy things with that. That's a fun one to do because there, there's no right or wrong answers. Um, but everybody can can participate in that. Just like when we do the great love debate, I think it's something that everybody can participate in because everybody has experience with it and everybody has a history with it and everybody has an opinion on it. Now, yeah, speaking of great love debate, how, how was your show? Did you just had a show, right? You just started I just had back a live show, shows. live, live show. So Finally. we've done We've done a couple, like we did one in Dallas and we did one in Denver when they were, when they were open for a few moments back in the fall. But um, this was our first one in 2021. We did one in Boca Raton, Florida in a theater. And I got to tell you, like, so they, you know, they did about, they limited the capacity to about half of what normally would me. They kind of spaced people out, but people were so happy to be out of the house and laughing and be around other people that it just seemed like a better experience than than almost any show we've done in a long long time it was really fun people were really excited to get back out and start dating again um you know people sort of crossed off 2020 uh, a lot of people you know got back together with exes just to get through the time uh and a lot of people were just trying to get by but i think people are excited i think 2021 is going to be one of the best years for dating in a long long time because i think people aren't necessarily going to rush out to be in 
you know, big groups of people, but I think they will want to tiptoe out and do one-on-one -on -one and, and things and go on dates and meet somebody. And so I think that's, that's, I think it's going to be a good year for it. No, uh, a lot of people are optimistic, you know, once we can get yeah. through January and maybe February and see what's going to happen politically. Yeah. I think by the spring and political things will calm down and vaccines will kick in and the weather warms up. I think this is going to be a very, hopefully, you never know. Uh, I'm very hopeful about this year and, uh, and optimistic about it. Yeah, me too. Um, I, I'm uh, really optimistic about my podcast future. Um, I've really gotten a passion for that and I'm just figuring out if I can like retire early from my real job. So yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> a lot of people have, yeah. And good for you yeah. trying to research it and figure it out and try new things. You know, yeah. that's what you kind of got to do. You got to keep trying and see what works. But, uh, most people who do podcasts, it's one of their favorite things that they do. You know, people really enjoy it. I've done just about everything there is to do in the entertainment business. And, um, podcasting is, is my favorite thing I've ever done. Yeah, everybody tells me I love to talk and I talk so much. And but then when I get on a podcast, it's like I'm trying to like pull questions out of my head. <laughs> I learned to prep. Well, you well know? yeah, good, good conversation. Good podcasts sound like good conversations. And the, and the listeners should feel like they had a seat at the table and you guys were just out to brunch or something. And I had yeah. it. And uh, and I think that's the way it goes. Like they shouldn't necessarily sound like interviews and they shouldn't sound like seminars and they should just sound like good conversations. So it should be a little ragged sometimes. There should be a little bit like, oh, my God, I forgot what I was talking about. I don't mind if people cough. I don't mean if people take a drink. I, I don't mind any of that. I think that's good. And I think it, it, it's engaging because it feels real. Yeah. Uh, uh, and speaking of like engaging and uh, with your great love debate last night, your first live show in forever, I'm guessing, at least about yeah, a month. A probably, month. About, probably about four months. Yeah. Four months. How was the atmosphere as far as your guests? Um, were you getting the same responses or were to some of the questions you used to have on some of your older uh, Great Love Debate shows? Or did the tone change with these people now since they've been through a pandemic for a year? Well, I before we started the show, I said, I want to pretend like life was normal. So I said, you're either going to have to mentally go back to 2019 or you're going to have to mentally go forward to 2021. So I didn't want to <clears throat> deal too much with the lockdown stuff. Um, I did ask some questions like, I want to know how many women there um, color coordinate their masks with their outfits. So we knew kind of sort mm -hmm. of divas we were dealing with. And that was fun. I wanted to know how many people had not made contact, physical contact with another person in eight months. And it was a surprising amount of people who were like, I have not touched a soul in, in eight months. Um, you know, how many people had not traveled outside of, you know, 20 miles around their house in, in a long time. And there was a lot of that too. So it was sort of, there is, there is a certain comfort in knowing that you're not the only one that experienced something. So the fact that everybody pretty much had to go through a similar experience um, was a really good thing. Uh, and one topic that came up a lot was if you had COVID and, and recovered, is that a, um, an asset to put on your dating profile? Like, do you lead with that? Like I have the antibodies go out with me and, uh, a lot of people said, no, that still seems like you might be sick. A lot of people didn't like that. I'm like, I would put that. I don't know. <laughs> uh, did, did you get COVID? Have you had it? I did not. I have not, as far as I know. I had it, I, so I, I guess. It's... I've, been, I, I've been tested a few times. It was terrible. The test is terrible. Oh, my God. Um, the test what's is worse. Well, what's worse is when you have to test yourself. Um, I've I had don't know how people can do that. I, I don't know how you would do that to yourself and it, get an accurate read. It, it torture yourself, really. <laughs> so you yeah. had it. How how sick were you? Um, I was on the brink of having to go to the emergency room. Uh, man, it laid me in the bed for three weeks. Uh, don't Are you time. glad you had it? Um, I am actually. I'm yeah, glad I to, know. <laughs> I'm so jealous of the people who had it and, and yeah. were okay. I'm like, that's such an advantage, I think you know, on some level to have had it. Uh, do you, were you cautious? Do you know how you got it? Is there any, it's just one of those things. I contact traced it to one of two situations. Um, one was work and the other was the night before Thanksgiving. I went to a social gathering. You know, I've run this group, singles group, and we had an yeah. event and I went to that event and there was a lot of people out there. Um, no masks, 
people really mm-hmm. weren't social distancing that well, but it was outside. And, um, and I think I got it that night. Cause you another, got re- you got it fairly recently. Yeah, it was, uh, the week, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving is when I believe I got it. Okay. Uh, Sunday following is when I started getting the symptoms. So I went and got tested Monday and positive. So yay, lucky me. Um, were then I gave ho- it to my girlfriend and wow. Were you hoping you were tested positive once you were already sick? Uh, yeah, I've honestly, I wanted to get it. And <laughs> my mindset know, once was, you're already sick, you might be like, well, I hope this is it. Yeah. yeah you know, really? Um, and I tell you, man, it beat me down. Uh, and, and you know, I'm like this, I had it, I felt it. I know what people go through when they get it. Yeah. Um, but I'm still that guy. It's like, I'm sick of wearing masks, you know? I mean, I think they're, yeah, I know. Uh, um, well, when the flu are we... sucks too. People don't want the people forget how bad the flu is. The flu also sucks. I know people don't like to compare no. the two. But the flu fucking sucks. You know, it'll knock you up for a month too if you have it the wrong way. Man, uh, is... the, yeah, the mask thing. Uh, you know, some places, most places are all are about the same on the masks. So I don't want to hear like, oh, they're they're this way in this place and this way. Most people, when you go into a business or you go into a store, you put the mask on and the overwhelming majority of people, no matter where you go, are like that. Yeah. You know? Everybody uh, wears them now. Everybody. I, everybody I don't see anybody them. not wearing them. No, I know. Everybody wears them, you know, um, and it's just like when you're getting into like, well, is it a good idea to put a mask on a six year old? You know, and I'm like, I don't know. Have yeah. you been on an, have you been on an airplane? I have not, but I'm going on one, uh, the 25th, I'm going to London. So that's going going to be interesting. How are you allowed to go to London? Uh, that's my real job. You're (laughs) allowed to go? Americans can fly to London? Yeah, supposedly. I got my itinerary today. I'll be flying out, staying for a couple of days. Do you have to take a test before you go? Uh, I'm pretty sure they test, they test us uh, at the airport, right? I don't know. I've never, I haven't flown. Or do you have to have some oh. kind of proof that you've been tested or? No, I mean, not to fly domestically, but I don't know. London is, uh, you know, to come here from London, you have to have, you have to have, you have to have a test three days beforehand. So you could have a test, have a huge going away party the night before and then come. So it doesn't really make yeah. any sense. Um, I, I had a lot of, I had a lot of shows canceled overseas. I was supposed to do a show in Singapore, two shows in New Zealand. Um, all those were wiped out and they don't want any part of Americans coming over now but i've flown about 40 times since this has all gone down um it feels safer than at any time you've ever flown it just does they're they're really doing a pretty good job um with it but you know somebody coughs on a plane now they might as well be waving a gun like people (laughs) freak out (laughs) might as well be saying bomb (laughs) i know it's like oh my god did that person just cough but um, yeah, it's, you know, they're doing a pretty good job. There isn't a huge history of people getting sick on planes now. They're, they're trying to spread people out. So uh, it's not bad. It's, it's not too bad to fly. And it seems very clean. And you, you can't drink. You can't get a drink on, on domestic flights. Oh, they took away alcohol, huh? Maybe not on international flights, but they oh. took it away on, uh, on domestic flights. Yeah. I don't know. I'm uh, anxious. I was trying to avoid traveling, but uh, usually well, you, you had it. You're good. Yeah. Yeah. But nobody knows that, though. No, nobody they, knows that. I mean, they know that you're good for a little while. Yeah. Doctors yeah. told me that uh, you're good for three months after you contract it. They That's have the had, minimum at the minimum. Yeah. They said they have had some cases of people getting it again. But wow, you must really have a bad immune system. <laughs> but but I don't think any of those people who got it again really got, I don't think anybody's got really sick twice. Yeah. So, you know, we have to assume at some point, you know, we're going to get some immunity or we're wasting time with the vaccine. You know, and if, 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 so I don't know. I don't I don't know about this vaccine. I, I'll, I'm going to wait. I'm going to I'm going to wait to like the third quarter of the year and see if it affects everybody the same or what. Well, then I'll have, get it. How how, uh, how good are they doing with the vaccination in North Carolina? Is it moving along smoothly or is it a mess like California? I mean, I don't really pay attention to it, to be honest with you, man. Oh. I, I got friends that work at the federal prison here and I see where they're getting like their second round of shots now. So evidently, there's more than oh, one wow. round. Are, are they uh, are they vaccinating prisoners? 
you would only think. I think they are. Like in some states, yeah. they are. They're like because we can't, we're gonna if we don't, we're gonna be a huge outbreak. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Well, Let's hell, see. they're letting all the prisoners go in California. So yes, yes, they are. So that's that's a good point. Yeah, <laughs> true. If <laughs> they are. <clears throat> all right. So. Hey, so um, Brian. I reached out to my singles group, ATB, and um, I put a question out there today of uh, they got some dating questions for you. So I picked a few of them and we're going to throw them out your way and let's see if you can help some of these people with their love uh, lives here, I guess. Okay. Like a better uh, term. Okay. This, uh, This is anonymous. It seems to me that in today's culture, men are expected to ignore a female's weight in their assessment of her attractiveness. Would you agree that it is considered a social norm for men to find overweight women attractive? It is a social norm for people, for men to find overweight women attractive? Yes, that's the way the question was written out. I think there's something for, I think, you know, some men find overweight women attractive and, and some don't, but I'll tell you what, a woman always thinks that she's more more overweight than a man thinks she is, you know, men are perfectly fine with uh, a few or many pounds overweight. We don't care nearly as much as you think we do. Um, You always hear these handful of guys that, you know, badger their girlfriends to go to the gym three times a day. That's not a normal thing. Um, I think that we should talk about weight in that we should talk about what we like and don't like. I, I think if, if somebody is a, a body type that, that doesn't do it for you, there's no harm in saying that. And if there's a body type that does do it for you, I think there's, there's um, good in saying that too. I, I think we just have to be honest with, with our preferences and also be open to things that we believe are outside our normal preferences. Because your answers um, almost always are outside your comfort zone or what you you think you you like, so uh, take a chance, everybody. No, yeah. um, do you think? And uh, since you've been uh, holding these great love debates and doing these podcasts with dating, and you know you've done a lot of stuff with dating, you're you're a expert at this, right? I'm an expert at raising the questions. I'm not sure I'm somebody who always has the answers, but I've talked to enough people that sort of collectively, I have a pretty good, uh, good idea of, of the answers. So how about this? Um, this is a big, this is a big thing now since 2013, we've got tenders, the bumbles, all the swiping apps, all right. The the swipe and swiping going left, going right. Um, who do you find complains more about, not looking the way they do in their pictures when they actually meet these people on their first date. Do you think the men complain more or the women complain more? I think the women complain more. There's wow. no doubt the women complain more. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yes, for sure. Um, now they're going to say that there's, because uh, the women are so hung up on height and they're saying a lot of time they can't get a good judge of that. So mm-hmm. height, is something that men have an easier time of hiding in the pictures. Uh, and that's the number one thing that the women are going to complain about. Um, men are going to complain about the weight or something like that. No, women are just as or more superficial about all of it than the men are. Men get a bad rap on that. And we are superficial. I'll get that. But we are no worse than the women. I, I agree. I agree. I heard, <laughs> heard a podcast today. Um, it's a young lady's podcast and she was going on about how she was trying to get this guy. He was a quote unquote fuck boy on her show. And he was going on about uh, the weight of women. They show up and they're 200 pounds heavier than uh, what they say they are, what their pictures portray. But uh, uh, I wanted to like send her an email and say, well, that 200 pounds is an over exaggeration, of course. It just shows the grand scheme of how much she did not look like her pictures, if that makes sense. You know, uh, I used to say this. We used to go out and we used to get drunk and we used to meet people in the bar and we used to ask them out and they would show up on a date. And they didn't look at like the picture in our minds of what we remembered either. And we were not angry about it. We sort of just like, oh, I guess I was drunk. She wasn't that hot or he wasn't that good looking or whatever. And we were sort of fine with that. The the fact that people think that like, oh, my God, I'm lied to now. Like, get over that, everybody. You know, people look different in person. Some people look people. People look better in person. 
So we're a little too hung up on, on, on that. Everybody is trying to put the best um, image of themselves out there. It's just like polishing up your resume for a job interview. And, you know, I don't, I don't blame the people. You don't have to lie about it. But if you're, you know, putting a three-year-old picture because you think it looks better and people are going to respond to you, good. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so here's, a, here's another one right here. And I see this all the time. People always posting their emotions on Facebook. All right. This is from Anonymous. Uh, do people that post constantly on social media about red flags usually have the most? And isn't that a red flag itself when someone's always posting about red flags? Uh, for sure. Uh, I, I, people who are, con I, you know, you've heard me say this before, especially the women. The women look for red flags and the men look for green lights. Mm. If, you're con if you're leading with, I'm looking for this, I'm, I, I'm, uh, I'm thinking about that, either you have a lot of red flags or you are damaged from some prior relationship and you are unable to see your opportunities clearly. You're bringing too much baggage to the dance if you're always talking about what you don't like. And a lot of people spend way more time talking about what they don't want, don't like, aren't looking for than they are what they do want and do like and are looking for. And that's, that's negative mindset dating. And you can't have that. You have to be hopeful with every opportunity. And I believe that men are fundamentally more hopeful when they go on a date than a women are because 65% of men, when they go on a first date with a woman, want to go out with her a second time. And only 32% of women want to go out with a man a second time. So, you know, and maybe you could say, well, the men's just trying to get laid or whatever. I don't know. I, th I think the men are willing to overlook a lot of stuff that the women, uh, the women are looking for sort of an emergency exit a little bit too quickly. Yeah. I, I've seen a lot of these people that post this stuff and they've been single for the longest. I, yeah. like five years. <laughs> I agree with that. And they I'm want like, to make no it, wonder. <laughs> yeah. They want to make it so everybody's got something wrong with them. And I always say, it's never that you haven't met the right person. It is always that you haven't been the right person. So if you think that like just nobody's out there is good enough or you haven't found it, take a look at yourself because that's probably where the answer lies. The problem staring right back at you. That's you right. Hear. All right. Next question. Nobody wants to give their names on these. So here's one from uh, anonymous again. Um, if there is jealousy over your friends of the opposite sex at the beginning of a relationship, will it work? Is your jealousy really about him or is it about your own feelings or insecurity? That's a very complicated answer. And uh, to tell you the truth, uh, my great love debate, this next episode is about jealousy. I'm doing a whole podcast about it, which I've never done before. Because Spoiler very, alert, yes. It was very complicated. There's a lot of layers to jealousy. It's not so black and white. Some jealousy is justifiable. Some isn't. Some has everything to do with the person uh, who is – some people are jealous of ghosts, like something that isn't there. Jealousy is a complicated thing. That being said, if somebody uh, – if you are jealous about something and you express it to your partner – I think whether your jealousy is, is founded or unfounded, I think your partner has to take it seriously and to listen to your concerns and not be defensive about it. It's actually flattering if somebody is jealous. It's actually a good thing if somebody's jealous. And you have to sort of be open about the dialogue on it. Why are you jealous? Did my behavior do something? Just be aware of the other person's perception and their feelings, even if you don't agree with it. Jealousy shouldn't always be a fight. Jealousy should be an opportunity to sort of converse. Okay. All right. What if, um, like you started dating someone and, uh, you know, he still hangs out with an ex, uh, should, it, how complicated is that? Is that something that person should just say, okay, well, maybe I can meet them, uh, and see how they interact or should you instantly just be like, I think, every, I think it's every circumstance, you know, my ex is my, uh, entertainment attorney. So I talked to her, you know, every so often somebody would have to deal with that it's an yeah. people like you used to date her but i also am somebody who believes that if i'm dating somebody and i really care about them and they say to me listen i know it's crazy i know there's probably nothing going on but it just bothers me that you hang out with your ex-girlfriends i think they have every right to say please don't do that yeah and i would and i would honor that and i'm okay with that because i'm here with you and they they should never be as an important as your current partner is, if you really care about your current partner. So I think they have a right to, to say, I, I wish you didn't do that. And I think you have to respect that they said that. Cool. All right. I guess we'll put a bow on that one.
Yeah. All right. Um, this one right here, uh, this is from Erin. She actually wanted to let her name out. Um, do you believe in monogamy? If so, why? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's the goal of everybody. You hope to, to, to like one person. And I think you want to, I think it's possible. I think that's the goal. I ask, I ask every, every time we do a live show, I ask people that if, if you could sign up for a, uh, a happy, loving, sharing, trusting, honest, sexually fulfilling relationship with just one other person, would you sign up for that? And almost everybody does want that. And the ones who don't want that either don't believe it's capable or don't believe it exists, but they still would want it. So yeah, I believe in it. Maybe I'm naive. A lot of people are like, no, it's not natural to just be with one partner. I at least believe in monogamy one at a time. Uh, it's like that old saying, that old football saying, if you have two quarterbacks, it's because you really have none. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah. and I sort of think that too, if you're dating multiple people, it's because it's because you don't like any of them enough so i'm pro monogamy um because i think at its best at its peak that's better than anything yeah you know that kind of um brings up something i was talking to some uh ladies today about in the group uh she was saying that you know she she's dated this guy a couple of times um he's saying that he's too busy to see her because of his schedule, but he would really like to see her. And I told her um, flat out, he's dating other people behind Yeah, he back. just doesn't like you enough to make you a priority in his schedule. Exactly, it's-, it's Saying um, that as delicately, but as obviously as, as Ken, and you don't wanna hear that. So yeah, he's dating other people or he's finding other things to do besides hang out with you. So neither of those is good. Yeah, if somebody wants to see you, they're gonna wanna see you. They're gonna make time. <laughs> They you know, are. this is, I hate to say it, but we're in an Nobody, era where it's like the no, next best thing. Yeah. Nobody's that busy. Nobody's that yeah. busy. Yeah, yeah. Nobody's that busy. I mean, you, he probably went out on the date with her. She well, went, he went home and he got on his phone and started swiping some more. He did. And now everybody, now that's the thing that, that, that I do question is people say that we're in sort of this swipe culture and everybody's about next, next, next. We used to walk around the bar 50 times until we saw somebody we liked. That was swiping. That was essentially the same thing. <laughs> we would go do yeah. these laps and go around and around and around. We were just swiping in real life then, but we were, we were not necessarily better before. Damn, I remember that, man. I remember when I was <laughs> in the army in the bars in Germany, just <laughs> drinking and trying to get up more courage to do another lap. Do another lap. It was always oh, wait, about no, what that was the red light district. Wait, that was, that was swiping. You know? <laughs> It was uh, insane. Those were the we, days. we were no better then. Yeah, those were the days. Uh, I, I'm kind of glad I, I'm like off the market right now. Um, I met okay. my girlfriend on one of those dating apps, and we've been dating now since. Uh, which which one? Uh, Luxie. Luxie. What? What? What is yeah. that? Oh, you haven't heard of Luxie? No, what's Luxie? So Luxie is a <laughs> version of Tinder and Bumble for the quote unquote elites, uh, supposedly uh, like millionaires, like, like the uh, league, beautiful people. Um, oh. but I mean, I got up there, so I, I mean, know, I mean, I don't know their policy, but you know, <laughs> I actually good. interviewed a, a spokesman from Luxy on the podcast last year. Well, good. So you're, yeah. you're a success story so far. Yeah. Success story. Um, she actually co-hosts some of my podcasts with how me. long before, between the time you first, uh, Swiped and connected till the time you met in person. Oh God! Uh, so we met last February on Luxie, or was it the end of January? And I believe we went on our first date the first week in February, because I remember she was sick on Valentine's Day, <clears throat> and I went to her apartment and gave her some flowers. So, yeah, Good romantic man. night. Now, how, does, how does she feel about you um, being in the singles world? I mean, I, I laid that out on the table when we had our first date at Starbucks. I told her what I did and that I was the head of all these groups and, you know, yeah. being single in Raleigh. And um, she basically is on board with it. She doesn't like it sometimes. Yeah. Um, uh, but she knows that's just the territory with being my girlfriend right now. So, yeah, your uh, your group is as uh, fun and active and 
body and um, <laughs> as any group like that I've seen anywhere in the country and I've seen lots of them. Yeah. And I talk about your group all the time and I'm well, like you there is a continuous stream of engagement like no other. And we try to work on other things to get the group engaged. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think today uh, we tried Titty Tuesday, but I don't think it it worked out so well. <laughs> I got to give it another shot. <laughs> yeah. Um, Try it again. So where's the great love debate heading next, man? You got somewhere? You got boots on the ground? Uh, we've done a couple virtual shows that have actually gone pretty well. So once a month, we're doing a virtual one that sort of like same live shows we do once a month. But the next uh, show we have is in West Palm Beach, Florida. Um in March, I guess it's in March, Tampa, Florida. We're going back to New Orleans. And as soon as they give me a, give me the red light, I'm on the list. We're going back to Raleigh and every place that we had to, had to postpone in 2020, we're definitely going to hit in, uh, in 2021. So oh, man, we're, well, we're open for business and the venues are calling and uh, we're working it out. So well, I can't wait for that show com, to come to Raleigh, man. All the dates. Yeah, I can't wait either. Well, maybe when you come to Raleigh, I can get you in the studio and we can, uh, Get yeah. some guests in here and we can throw away, uh, throw around some dating stuff, man. That'll be fun. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. All right, man. You got any advice for any beginner podcasts out there? Any beginner podcasters? Yeah, keep at it. Your first podcast is never going to be as good uh, as your 15th podcast. It might even completely change. So you have to keep doing it until you get into a groove of what you're comfortable with. You're never going to be that comfortable right away. You're never going to like the sound of your own voice right away. It Ugh. takes a while. So pretend like, it's just having another conversation. You have hundreds of conversations every single week. So pretend this is one of them and keep having it until you'll know when it sounds right. Uh, and there's people out there all over the world who want to hear what you have to say, no matter who you are. Awesome, man. And if people want to get in touch with you, they can uh, 833-PODS-123. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's right. You can call there uh, or you can go to greatlovedebate.com uh, and all our contact information is on there. And uh, subscribe to the Great Love Debate podcast. We have the world's number one dating relationship podcast. We have a lot of celebrities on there and they're just as fucked up as all of us. And I got to tell you, you got to tune in to his uh, Great Love Debate and Political Junkie. And political Check Junkies. That out, yeah. out too. Um, yeah. some great conversation. Also, um, follow Brian on Facebook. He's, he's yeah. great as far as you, like, you can friend, I'll accept everybody. So, uh, <laughs> Brian Howie, come, come, come bring it on people. All right, Brian, thanks for being on the show, man. I appreciate it. And, uh, safe travels out there, brother. Thanks buddy. You too. Have a good time. Yeah, you Enjoy too, man. Thanks again. And we will talk to you later. Hey, right. this is Mike. Um, I was just talking to Brian Howie, the great love debate. Um, wow. Thanks again for being on the show, Brian. That was awesome. Also check out Brian and my conversation on YouTube. It will be released. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check us out on iTunes or anywhere else you get your podcast shows. Thanks for joining us. And we'll see you next time on hammered.